Hi, this tutorial will help you understand design systems and what they're all about. Thanks to design systems, you can set all your design guidelines, resources, and documentation in place at the early stage of a project to maintain consistency. This really makes the processes easier for your team and everyone involved. I will show you how to create a design system from scratch. Open the Design Systems tab in the top bar of your dashboard. You can create a design system or view any existing ones. This is also where all your design systems will appear once you create them. Let's get started by clicking the Create Design Systems button. You can build a design system in two ways. You can either create it by using an already existing library in UXPIN or Sketch, or you can build it from scratch. Like I said, I want to start with a completely empty one, so I'll click the Create from Scratch button. Each design system is divided into four sections where you can add resources for your project. And these are colors, typography, assets, and UI patterns. To add a color, you can either type its hex and confirm by pressing enter or import colors from a website URL or put a direct link to a CSS file for better results. I'll just paste a website address to that input to collect colors. The next tab is text styles and formatting. You can add these to the design system directly from the editor. Once you finish organizing other resources, open your prototype and see how it works. Then you have assets and design systems. By assets, I mean images and icons, also in SVG format. Just click the upload images or icons button and choose your files. Just like typography, UI patterns have to be added to the design system when you have an open editor. UI patterns are elements and components designed and prototyped in UX pin or sketch, and you can add them anytime you want. Now that we're done adding the elements which you can add while in the design system, let's move to the editor. I created my design system based on this prototype to design more pages in line with it. In the editor, you can use, add, and edit elements from your design system by updating the library. It's cool how UX Pin creates a corresponding design system library with the same name as the design system you've just created. So you'll be able to use its elements directly in your prototypes. You can always learn more about that in our design system library video tutorial. Go to Design System Libraries and locate the library that matches your design system. Starting from colors, you can spot that the colors in the library are the ones which are imported to the system. If you make any changes, they will sync with your design system automatically. You can add textiles by selecting an element on the canvas and clicking Add Textile button. Then you've got assets, which I added earlier. And last but not least, symbols. Select a symbol on the canvas and add it to the library. This way it will be included in the design system as well. Now I will fill my library with some more elements from the prototype. Design system libraries can store elements and are divided into categories, which make using design systems a lot easier. But that's still not quite it. There's more than just that. Let's go back to the one called HMQ library. This is the full documentation and descriptions of how to use color in this design system. The description contains detailed links, elements of the code, and color samples, including information that help developers implement the design. This is the place for general as well as more detailed descriptions of individual categories. All these descriptions are about the elements from my design system library only enriched with documentation. The same goes for text styles. Each style has its own React code. Let's jump to the following tabs, Assets and UI Patterns. It's best to divide all these elements into groups and describe them. You need to enter the edit mode, go to the left panel and click add a new category, then name it. You can then easily drag and drop your elements into that category. This really makes designing easier once your design system starts expanding. 
Now you can add a description right below. It's cool how UX Pen allows you to use advanced formatting even for such descriptions. In the case of this button, I want to paste a few lines of code. Done. But that's still not it when it comes to what design systems can do. What's great about documenting your symbols is that developers can easily access the documentation when using the spec mode. It saves them hours they usually waste on miscommunication or searching for documentation on a specific UI element. To reach the spec mode, let's go back to the editor and then preview. Look for properties such as colors, typography, or CSS code. And the most important one, the information about its origin, so the design system it comes from. Below, you've got all the properties and also documentation and snippets from the design system. And that's how UX Pin makes collaboration easier. Now, close the spec mode and go back to your design system. It allows live interaction with elements. Let's check it out on this button or this select list. And that's all the magic. Finally, let's go through settings. You can decide if your design system is private or public, but whatever the case, you'll get a link to copy and share it. You can also create different types of tokens and for a more personalized touch, you can upload your logo right here. To sum up what we've just gone over, changes in your design system sync with the corresponding design systems library. Then you can store and manage colors and assets, textiles and UI patterns. Add descriptions, documentation, code, and links to your components and categories. Or inspect elements in the spec mode for their size, colors, or CSS code. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.